Sup guys, Ninja16 here bringing you a 32 and 7 hardcore mission. team deathmatch game featuring Golden Holden 14 and Boss Cox. Uh, this time we got the, another rant episode uh, bringing up Easter egg difficulty, kind of a tra creativity, and how their server technology is not really where it needs to be. As far as uh, Easter egg difficulty coming out, I know that I haven't posted a video in about a week or two. That's because I've been, you know, trying to play the new map pack with Buried and all of that. And which, in my opinion, it was a good map pack, but it w didn't go to that next level that I was kind of hoping that it would. Um, so I was wrong about Buried being annoying, which I'm actually happy about because Bar while Buried is annoying, it's not as annoying as I pictured with, like, Shangri-La on that. That was just an awful map, in my opinion. But... What is extremely annoying about Buried are the witches and, of course, the Easter egg difficulty. And the difficulty is so ridiculous that in both my attempts, it just didn't work out. I tried it with, of course, four people, followed the steps exactly in a tutorial. We get to the last step, which is very difficult with the targets, and just couldn't do it. So now I am probably not going to attempt that again for a while. But I probably will do the other Easter eggs at one point or another. Treyarch needs to calm down there with their easter egg difficulty if they're going to make it harder than buried as we see that they slowly escalate the easter egg difficulty each map pack. If it gets worse than what it is on buried then it's just going to be way too difficult and only the um, gamers that are primed to do easter eggs are going to succeed at it or if they keep attempting it over and over until they eventually get it which I don't feel like spending time like that on there. But the thing that this map pack did show was that Treyarch does have some creativity as far as coming up with their uh, Zombies map, which had more of a Westerner feeling, although it's based in Africa, in a um, what looks like to be a mining facility, in a mi you know former miner's town that seems to be underneath the ground. Now, the thing that is kind of saddening is that they also have a lack of creativity sometimes, and... The paintball um, map with Rush was um, very creative, while they brought back three fan favorites, which I'm not sure if that shows a lack of creativity or just a want to get back to the fans' point of view. In my opinion, it's probably back to get it to the fans' point of view, but there's also kind of like, well, why don't you come up with the original material? The map layouts seem very similar to one another. They don't really seem like they're expanding that much on that front. You'd expect Treyarch to come up with some creative maps to try to combat, you know, the Halo scheme or something, but no, they keep with the same balanced map forms, and frankly, the maps just keep getting... Except for Rush on this map pack, I'm not really that intrigued by these new multiplayer maps. They seem kind of boring to me. That typically happens with any Call of Duty game, where eventually by the last map pack, the maps are just boring as far as the DLC goes. I don't really remember them for anything spectacular, even though I've played them a number of times. Um, and then for our last point is that other Treyarch shortcoming is on server technology. Now, with uh, this with the clan Psycho Watch the World Burn that I'm involved in, we have some players that are not in the United States, or even if they are in the United States, they are a couple hours behind. And what happens is because of the server technology and how it handles um, people, they try to pair you with the, you know, your regional time zone, so that way you have the best connection. But if you want to play with somebody in a um, time zone that's either further ahead or further behind you, you can end up experiencing um, lag or a lack of good connection, which is kind of ridiculous considering the fact that we can connect um, with people overseas by phone pretty easily. We can also play with them on Xbox um, very easily as well. Some of them have better connections than others, but typically upon the point that you're going to lag if you, say, play with somebody in Australia and you're in the United States, you're going to be running a two-bar if they're the host, or they're going to be running a two-bar if you're the host at best. Most of the time you can will be running a one-bar. If you somehow have the super amazing connection, you have three bars, which I don't know how that even happens, but they just need to improve their technology. I mean, the technology to get a server that would balance out those players exists, Maybe just I'm that... Standby. They won't spend the money to upgrade their servers, which is kind of saddening. But that's pretty much it, guys. This was another episode of The Rant. Uh, I'm going to have some more videos coming up for you, and that's the end of this one. So this is Ninju signing off. Catch you guys next time.